I feel very indebted to both Surya and Shah Rukh because, uh, you know, they, they, I thought they were kidding when they said that they wanted to be part of this film. In both cases, if you ask me if there are good people in the industry, which we keep getting accused of, I'll say there are some angels. I want to see what Saif has done to my role because I think he's an exceptional actor and uh, I want to see his take on Vikram. I don't think it's a competition between the North and the South. We are the Indian film industry. When we go out at Cannes, it's an Indian film. It's not a South Indian or a Hind North Indian film, it's an Indian film. I never expected to be a director and I didn't want to be. I don't have the qualifications of being a director. But when I met Dr. Nambi Narayan, I was moved by his story to such an extent that I felt it was a national disservice not to know about Dr. Nambi Narayan. You know, the fact that he's only known wherever he is for the spy case by itself is insult to the injury, right? And more important than that, uh, uh, you know, there is a fact that he was given the Padma Bhushan and nobody knows why. And on top of that, the reason he was given the Padma Bhushan is so essential for our nation right now, uh, for us to retain our intellectual capital that so badly is required in the years to come. I thought it became, it became like, a, like a, uh, a passion, like an insanity project for me actually. And uh, so when I went in there, I wasn't expecting to direct the film. I knew I wanted to write it because I understood uh, his technological contributions, what engine he made, why the engine is considered the most extraordinary engine for never having failed and how to make that palatable to the, to the audiences so that I maintain the sanity of the genius in terms of the technical achievement. At the same time, people are able to follow the impact of his, uh, his discovery and his invention. And then the fact that uh, uh, I wanted to act in it because every actor deems of doing a sort of a lifetime role where he's playing from a young guy to an old guy. I did not know that that is going to be the biggest challenge of my life and there was so much of learning in place because of that. The third thing is I didn't find a producer for this film because it didn't have the usual markings of the commercial viability of a film like the cliched songs and the fights. So I decided to put my money where my mouth is to produce it. But I wasn't expecting to direct it. And uh, just 25 days before the shoot was to begin my director for reasons uh, and beyond our control, was not able to direct the film because we were delayed in casting the film. And, uh, and so the, response, uh, the, the responsibility of directing the film fell on my shoulders. And, uh, and I took just a mighty leap of faith. I do not know how I managed to accomplish it. I, I do not, I've never directed, like I said before, an iPhone film or never been to an editing studio or a, or a um, you know, music sitting and somehow it just all fell behind the line that we wanted to tell the story and this is the story we wanted to tell and under no circumstances are we going to compromise or stop. You know, I met Nambi sir and uh, he was telling me that he was very happy with the kind of work I have done and he's a fan of mine. But when I saw him for the first time, I knew right away that we were missing the big picture. I knew right away that we were missing a huge chunk of who Nambi Narayanan is and what it was. I just couldn't put my finger on it. It's while talking to him over a period of seven months that suddenly one day, it was like a revelation for me when I realized that Nambi Narayanan is not about the case. It's all about his achievements, his spectacular achievements in Princeton, New Jersey, or in France, or in Scotland, or in USSR while it was breaking up and he had to get the rocket engine, smuggle it out of Siberia and bring it to India, the kind of things that he has done that nobody knows. And he considered all that normal part of his job. All that, like James Bond would, was just a normal part of a day. And I, I felt it was completely uh, wrong and, and, and almost non-patriotic not to know about Nambi Narayanan. I think the biggest part, the hardest part of directing the film was to be direct myself. I knew what I needed from the others, but I couldn't figure out whether I was delivering what I wanted. Well, you know, when I started this film, it's supposed to be a small film about a poor man's James Bond. And it turned out to be James Bond ka Bob ka film. And I didn't expect it to do that. I didn't expect it to be premiered at, at, at Cannes. I didn't expect it to get the kind of reception it did. I didn't expect it to go into Wall Street and have it shown on the world's biggest billboard. Nor did I expect June 3rd to be named after Dr. Nambi Narayanan as Nambi Narayanan Day. Uh, all this to me is like a, is like a dream. I'm like, uh, it's surreal for me. So I, I can only say that I think I have the blessing of the Almighty that all this is happening. And 1st of June, I hope uh, all this culminates uh, and the public liked the film. I'm sorry, 1st of July.
First of June is my birthday. <laughs> you egoistic bugger, huh? <laughs>